first lecture is in English, I'll just start in English. So. Thank you, uh, everybody that came today, also to mention the Yakov Kitchigallery team, which is here in big numbers. Uh, and of course, uh, you that you came today. Um, so today we have a presentation of my uh, history. Ben Harker is going to present it. He uh, actively collaborated in making this exhibition, also choosing and curating the live library videos in the, uh, in the room next uh, on the right side. And uh, of course, uh, he's a long year uh, creator and artist of a line writer, uh, administrator, and uh, leader of a since 2007, he's been working on uh, line writer art and uh, tracks. He's also a multimedia artist uh, and uh, he's going to present us today a little bit uh, about uh, history and uh, he made several videos also on, on YouTube about line writer history and the gamification of an art medium. So, thank you, Ben to take uh, such a courage and to come on a short notice uh, and I'm uh, giving you the floor for this presentation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Yanni. Uh, Yanni, uh, two weeks ago, Yanni was like, would you like to come see the exhibit that you're talking about? And I was like, let me check the point taste. <laughs> it's even up expensive. And now I'm here giving a lecture, so it's it's been a while, a couple of weeks. Um, hopefully, this is coherent and we're together. <laughs> so this is uh, um, I'm, it's it's great to be here at the Match Gallery in Ghana. Uh, um, I hail from Minnesota in the United States, which it was a long way, and I get that. <laughs> but I I will make it visit just fine. Um, here we go. So, a little bit about me, um, and the Yanni already touched on some of this, but I, I was a community administrator in, uh, here at Lions Group, so poor community for about eight years. Um, I was, uh, I had directed and produced a bunch of community projects. Um, I created uh, the Blind Art Archival Project, which basically was to save everything that has been made in Blind Rider. Jokingly referred to myself as the resident line writer history buff, and now I guess it's not really a joke, so I'm getting a lecture on line writer. I also, I'm, I mean, I made a 51 minute line writer video that went viral in 2017, um, and since then I've been actually getting uh, freelance commissions for music videos, and that's very exciting. And surreal. Um, and uh, and then, as I mentioned, I have written some uh, video essays on uh, sort of blind matter technology, and um, I, wrote, I wrote an essay called Blind Matter the Implication of an Art Medium, in which I sort of argue um, that blind matter was, is like essentially an art medium that people are treating as a game, why I think that's can be a bad thing. Anyway, so, this is, some of this is just to say that a lot of this stuff is very personal and close for me, so I'm trying to do like a, a history retrospective, but it's all, like, I am directly involved with a lot of it, so just keep that in mind. Uh, let's do some history. Um, it's been 13 years, um, and most of it was in obscurity, so this is going to be fun. <laughs> I'm going to learn all about this niche internet community and all the struggles and tribes and cool stuff that's come out of it. Um, so I just like recently figured out that I've been pronouncing Washington's name wrong um, because when the, the awards they're going, they said Boston Cadets is actually I'm learning this. You know I it's right. Boston Chadez or Chadez. Boston Chadez, is that right? It's cool. So Boston Chadez um, uh, originally posted this in September 26 on DeviantArt, and it was, uh, it was basically like uh, an experiment. 
experimental art idea for a class, um, animation class, I think. And um, it was based on a drawing that you can all see how in the main area we had it was like a line and a sweater and some trees. And uh, it was like, what if we just sort of simulate this in Flash? Um, so yeah, it was, it was like an experimental art and post on TV art, and uh, no one expected that it would blow up as much as it did. Um, the original post page got millions of hits virtually overnight. Um, media outlets by the time and games for windows were like covering it in interviews. Um, hundreds and then thousands of YouTube videos popped up with people like posting, recording their tracks that they made and posting them on YouTube, which wasn't even part of the game. People had to go and find screen recording software, which was a little difficult back then. Um, and there were all sorts of rip-offs and limitations which made people ask uh, what, uh, it, are there going to be uh, new features added to this because people were making like a version of the Eraser, for example. Um, and that leads us to um, Jagged Peak Adventure, which was a track created by um, Washington's friend, Uncombed, that's his username, actual name is Steve Wiggins, um, who uh, was using a sort of an unreleased build, and as you can see on this little toolbar here, there is an eraser and a zoom tool, and uh, this was very exciting. <laughs> but um, shortly after this video was posted, well, and after the original beta was posted, uh, there was a series of delays. There was a broken motherboard, an ear infection, a computer virus, all sorts of awful stuff. And so, the adventure ended up being this very long teaser trailer, and consequentially, it became the most popular video in LineFire, and that was, it would stay that way for the, the most viewed LineFire video for the next decade. Um, so, while we were waiting for the new version to come out and these features, um, there was a sort of community that popped up in these little forums, um, the biggest of which was LineFire.org. Um, people were sort of chatting with each other and sharing um, ideas and techniques and opinions. Um, lots of people were figuring out how to make loops, which is actually tricky because <laughs> you can leave the gaps but anyway. Uh, and then people figured out this technique to make a straight line where you right click and then you left click somewhere else um, it brings up the dialogue and then the mouse just jumps from one point to another and people use that to make these web curves which will create a smooth curve that looks janky but it botch would not crash. Uh, so uh, all these exciting things and some people were adding a bit of scenery one of the most famous tracks from that time period called Die of the Souls. Um, um, in the meantime, there were these uh, rights negotiations going on behind the scenes, and in December 2006, um, not only did Beta 2 launch, but InXile announced that they now have the rights to LineWire, um, and they launched uh, an official website for LineWire, um, and they said that there was uh, a version coming for the DS and mobile app and forums, like official official forums and uh, contests with money prizes coming soon. <laughs> uh, this is all on the, on the new page. Um, and so, anyway, uh, beta 2, as you can see, there is the eraser and the zoom tool, but there's also a straight line tool, which does the thing that people have already figured out a way to do, but uh, as an official feature. And then there are two other line types. These are acceleration lines that speed up the rider and uh, scenery lines that do not affect the rider. So you can draw your scenery without worrying about much crashing into the scenery. Um, another thing I'm going to point out is that it will work later is there is a line count indicator here that's telling you how many lines are going on. That will come up later, I promise. Um, uh, so switching gears a little bit. Um, Tech Dog, unlike most of the people into Line at this time, was not a teenager. Um, he was a graphic designer in his 30s and he was living in rural Minnesota and he broke his leg and he had not a lot to do except sit at a computer and he got really into Line Rider and he was making these um, extremely detailed uh, graphics in Line Rider just by drawing lines one at a time. And so 
people started like he was doing these things that people were calling shading, where he would add this texture so you can see this volcano has like this whole texture going on. Like he would like copy this is an anime character that he drew in Line Rider right now. And so um, he, he, this is around the time he starts seeing people in the comments. The, this fascinating comment that came up over and over again, people would say, This is a line writer, this is art. And I just I find that fascinating because it's like, Oh, you didn't think about it, sorry, until people were waiting. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> um, moving on, I Write Lines was a community form that Tech Talk founded that became sort of the hub for these more creative and artistic aspects of line um, On the flip side of things, people were figuring out all these cool uh, tricks and challenges. Um, a manual is going to bounce the sled on the front or on the back, and uh, you can use acceleration lines to uh, keep Bosch from falling into a flat sled, which is when the sled is just flat, like it probably is. Um, another thing that people were doing is they were trying to make tracks that were all blue, which means there's no acceleration lines, which would be like the original beta, except in the beta 2. Um, uh, some people were making tracks that were Works. These are these tracks with like these small lines that were sort of bouncing off around or causing these uh, unnatural looking movements. And then finally, another thing that was happening is X Y, which is if you what, what happens if you try to use only vertical or horizontal lines? What can you do? Um, and so people were coming up with these really interesting challenges. Um, there one. The, the, the biggest game changer of all of these was someone found a physics glitch um, in the uh, code, uh, not in the code, but some, someone found a physics glitch where if Bosch is on the other side of the line, so lines are one side, Bosch collides on one side of the line and passes through one side of the line, but if Bosch changes direction while approaching, if Bosch is approaching the line from the side that, that they're not going to collide with, Away from the line, uh, Bosch can get pulled towards the line because the engine thinks that Bosch is going through it. And this um, created this really, what people found was this really cool effect, and lots of people started to do it. Um, and it was a way to give a speed boost without using red lines. Um, it also uh, was sort of tricky to do, but really rewarding to pull it off. And so it became like this. Super interesting, and if you think this is wild, wait till some of the stuff gets later. Um, so, um, uh, back to the community aspect of things, people were uh, figuring out that they could download LineWire and open it in FlashPlayer, and there were tutorials being posted on like, how to download it and how to get it on your computer because then you can play it offline and it would also run faster. Um, and then, so FlashPlayer. Save a file, um, and so when you save the track, it saves it in this really obscure folder location in like buried in your computer. And people, well, people were able to find that location, and then you could swap that out for someone else's file. And people use this to be able to collaborate, be able to watch each other's tracks in line writer, um, be able to like uh, record each other's tracks. So if someone would send, someone's like, my computer's slow, I can't record, I can't do this screen recording. I want to put this on YouTube, send it to someone else, they would load it into their this obscure folder and name it the right file so that my writer would read it and then they would record the tracks. So this is all these like really interesting, complicated ways. It's basically just how do we collaborate. Um, there's also this uh, there's a lot of competition going on. So um, there there was a whole bunch of different contests. Um, about like what we do for these strengths, um, and uh, uh, people, sometimes, sometimes we'd be like, can you do this challenge? Other times we'd just be like, here's a new strength, everyone made a track, and then we'll vote on which one's the best, and then that person gets like a little medal <laughs> or something. Um, and two of these kind of solidified into like recurring things. Um, one was this thing called Movie of the Week, or that's what we say, every week. Enter and then people vote on what's the best movie. Um, and 
and then uh, the Tournament of Champions, which is a very cheesy title, um, get into basically it started with we're going to put everyone's best track into a tournament and see who wins. And that became a recurring thing as well as every year, a couple of years. Um, and this has interesting effects on art, as you can imagine, if people are uh, competing all the time for popularity and who can make the best track and how do you like anyway, we'll get to that. We'll get back to that. Um, so in the meantime, in the gravity well village exploiting uh, sphere, um, people are figuring out that binary runs at 40 frames per second. And if you focus on each frame individually, you can decide, you, you can do some pretty interesting things. So um, around fall 2007, people started coming up with these things called chains and flames of gravity wells. So the chain is just if you have a gravity well that pulls Bosch every frame of those 40 frames per second, then you get this sort of quick, uh, dramatic movement. And a flame is if you do every other frame, it creates this sort of vibrating thing that happens that speeds Bosch up really quickly. Um, CN Freak is maybe one of the most influential people on the Latin American music history. Um, and, um, he was the person who popularized this the most. <coughs> um, and he developed a style called Manny Work, which is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's manuals and work. So you have basically flames, manuals, flames, manuals, flames, manuals, just that would happen for the whole track, and that would be the track, and set it to power well. It's all very exciting and impressive. Um, yeah. um, over in the, the scenery area, um, Tech Dog was releasing <coughs> Tech Dog was releasing these tracks with just these really detailed scenery. And he would mention this is how many lines there were in the track. And some people decided that this was a competition <laughs> and they needed to be Tech Dog at line count. So, um, there, there's, there's an issue though, because the Flash Player is not built to handle this many objects, and each line is a new object, so if you get to like 10,000 lines, it just starts running at like 5, 6 frames per second, which is really obnoxious. Um, and uh, when line runner bags, it doesn't drop frames, it just slows down, so the track would take like forever to play. Um, and so, people wanted to make really elaborate tracks, they had to come up with a solution to this. And the solution they came up with was called scenery splitting. And this would be you you see maybe 20% of the track, then you erase the first 10%. Or you you say that as part one. You erase the first 10% and then you see to 30% and you say that's part two. And then you erase the second 10% and see and you do that so you have these overlapping things and then you make separate recordings. And you stitch them together so it looks like one thing. And uh, I did this. <laughs> I made a track with 100,000 lines. Um, I, don't, I, I never claimed that it was good because of the line count, but I very much did this. So just <laughs> full disclosure there. Uh, anyway, um, this culminated with a track eventually that was like 500,000 lines which is way more lines than anyone should ever draw in division one at a time. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> moving on, um, so Bosch did now owns the rights to line writer again. So I can be I can be super candid about how I feel about what I have to go now, so this is gonna be fun. Uh, so the mywriter.com forum finally launched and it was just it was just overrun by mostly like young kids just spamming everything everywhere. Um, it, it just, they, they had no idea how to handle it. Um, they were, they were, they were uh, the site was also pretty like, glitchy and the layout was pretty like, uh, some would say simple, some would say ugly. <laughs> uh, 
And uh, anyway, um, Tech Dog was hired by Exile to um, do some like make some new, make some things like build up hype for the for the game, and also to work on some things in the game. Um, and the first one of these was called uh, Tech Dog's Adventure. You can see some pictures here. Um, you can see that it is the same box that we know, but the lines are gone. Instead, we have these sort of mountains, and the box is this box is doing these tricks with the sled. And it's all very exciting. Um, there was lots of banjo music and screaming. That, that's not how I'm doing the screenshots, but just imagine Boss screaming like, whoa, while doing these tricks and like, like furious banjo in the background. Um, uh, yeah, so that, that's the first taste we all got on one minute to go And um, some people were really excited, and some people were really concerned about some things. Anyway, uh, so then. It, it took uh, maybe, let's see, I think it's like six months, maybe a year before when I was actually released. Um, there was a lot of it, so I got to play when I was going for the first time today, back there. And so I have a lot of this stuff, because I had a Mac and it was only, so a lot of this stuff um, is things that I sort of knew about, but I didn't understand the details of. Um, one thing that was very clear was that there was this line type called trampoline lines where Bosch would literally just bounce off of them and it was impossible for Bosch to go off sled while hitting a trampoline line. So people would just put trampoline lines everywhere and Bosch would just ping pong in every direction and it was <laughs> kind of like uh, people started thinking like, well, if you have trampoline lines, like, what's, what's, what, where's the fun? Um, because we can make Mosh go anywhere at time. Um, another first thing that frustrated people that I know about was the, the curve tool. Um, so they replaced the straight line tool with the curve tool. And that meant that you could make these cool bits be curved, but if you wanted to do something like, like manuals where you wanted to have different sections of the line with different accelerations, it would take twice as long because it would take twice as long to make straight lines to draw the line and then deselect the curve before making the curve. So drawing a straight line was more work, basically, because they didn't have a straight line to play the curve tool. Um, there was a lot of new possibilities for graphics. Um, and I mean, I, 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 basically the implementation was just not thought out very well. Um, it was complicated and confusing to import graphics. It was really easy to grab their clipboard files uh, and just throw them in. And it was, uh, it, it was like, if you imagine like if you imagine like messing around with Photoshop for the first time with like paint tools, um, it felt like that, except it didn't also have one of the fun Photoshop things. It was just anyway. Um, it also had a story and challenge mode, which was uh, what was it was unequivocally a game. <laughs> it's the interesting thing about that where you would have a level and you try to get to the end of the level. And you have to fill in sections of the track. And there was this um, the story with basically the most, like just imagine the, the most, like, the most full of tropes, stereotypical story you can imagine about a boy on a sled. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a girl on a sled who is like some sort of weird love interest to the girl kids. And there's also an evil sledder that is mean and stuff. And, so that's basically the plot. That's the whole plot. There's not much there. Um, this the game got mixed reviews ultimately, um, both from the community and from the public. Talk too much about this, but we have to talk about Binary Silverlight and Binary Day Three, which were Exile's attempts to build on and or replace the web version of Binary. So if you want to buy the game, Beta Two is still there. Binary Silverlight um, was incredibly broken. Um, they tried to do things like track share, so you could like post it and then like share the track directly. And there were just there were so many bugs. Uh, the thing I remember most about Binary Silverlight was there was a thread that was very very long. It was just called I Hate Silverlight. And there were people in this thread on I Write the Lines just like listing all the things they hated about this build. Um, so eventually, NXL gave up trying to fix that build and instead tried to uh, modify Beta 2 and they released Beta 3 where they, they add, as you can see, there's, there's, a, there's a girl sled here. Um, so there's 
different watches, uh, ten different sweaters, um, and uh, they also added these new lines, which were also from Unbound. They're also being Unbound, but they're track from lines and slow down lines, and they're mostly useless, <laughs> especially slow down lines. You can just reverse the slow down lines. Slow down just it's just it's terrible. Uh, okay. uh, so. The big question is why did this not work out? Because by 2012, NXI was totally in a direction to see Wasteland 2, Godfather, and Close to Hot Book Take RPGs is back. And this is very successful Kickstarter, raising $3 million of their $1 million goal. So they're in a totally new direction by 2012. Um, and, uh, and my opinion on this is because they could never decide if they were making a sandbox game. Were they making a proper game for adults? Were they making a toy for kids? Were they making a serious art medium for creators? They, they were trying to do all of it, and I don't think they realized they were trying to do all of it, and they didn't end up making any of it very well. That is done. Done talking about that. <laughs> um, so in the meantime, while well, the was doing all of this, um, there was uh, this guy, Matt. Henry, right, and Henry T, who was um, making these other modifications of Beta 2 that were just sort of these, like, sort of sensible features that would help people do things they were already doing more easier. So, for example, like the color eraser, and then that would be so you can just, maybe I only want to erase the scenery lines, um, and then you can just you can make it a green eraser, and then you wouldn't erase any track. That's really useful. Um, you can also press backspace to delete the last line that you drew. That's really useful. Um, and then there's an Xbox snap feature, so you can just hold down X, and then when you draw a line, it snaps to the axis. Um, and so um, a lot of these features were in revision 6.7, which is sort of an unofficial, and this became like the unofficial version that most people used instead of anything that was. was um, and that would last for many years. Um, there's also some, some pretty game-changing features. I might not be immediately apparent why, but the, the zoom tool um, allowed you to zoom in more in 6.7. This would allow people to draw really small lines, and this would allow people to get really in depth with the gravity of stuff. Um, the other thing is the timer, and we will get to that in a bit. First, let's talk about let's talk about all this stuff. <laughs> so there, there are a whole bunch of genres, techniques, Lego. There's I'm, I'm going to walk through these quickly. Uh, granules, that's gravity wells, and manual combined. So like what you see here is a sort of granule thing. Um, alt quirk, this is quirk, but alternative. <laughs> Basically, what this means is there was a lot of like it, it was like trying this it was trying to return to the original idea of work where Bosch is being bounced around by these weird small lines, as opposed to being flung around by these very dramatic chains and flames. Um, integration. Um, this was originally supposed to be integrating manuals and work, so the the work was like sort of hidden. But um, what it came to me was a bunch of writing on one side of the line, and then the line uh, moves across Bosch, and then Bosch is writing on the other side of the line. So this is a little switch for um, Airtime just means times when Bosch isn't touching the lines. Um, and then all of these things that add together to make things for what was called for like flow or style. Um, people were getting really into the Details of these tracks, and this is, I think, more than, in part from that sort of competition mindset that we talked about. Um, and then finally, Omni tracks. This was named for the name because of the track Omni vs. Beta. Basically, this means it is tracks with sections with different styles or different techniques or different things. You have like maybe one section being X Y, and then there would be manuals. So, 
We're going even deeper here. <laughs> so these are this is how the physics engine works, right? Um, each of these points that you can see here are oh I missed one. I missed the the butt. Um, but each of these points you can see here are points that um, where Bosch collides with lines in the physics engine. And people figured out that you can affect these individually. And so you get um, ASDF stands for alternating single direction plane. Um, an alt plane is where there's uh, two planes happening, but they're offset. So Bosch is being pulled in one direction and another direction. different contact points in the same direction. Um, stacking is when you add more, add more lines to strengthen the gravity force to make the whole bunch more. And you try to make that as strong as possible um, because this is viewed as, this is viewed as better. <laughs> um, and then what people took to calling get stacks, which there's no real reason for the get guys because people wanted to call them more than just the stack. Was when you're doing that on multiple contact points individually. So it gets really wild and things. And this, all of this stuff sort of blurred the lines between, like, this thing which was really just a bug, and then it was a glitch, and then it was an exploit, and not then it was a trick. And now it's starting to feel like it's like an essential part of how people are making tracks, which is super wild to me. Um, and all of this adds up to a workflow that's just um, you draw a line, you play, you stop, you erase the line, you redraw the line, you play, you stop, you erase the line, you redraw the line, and you do this over and over really, really quickly. You're just do 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 and, and you're, like, people do this for hours to try to get like a really difficult gravity well trick to happen. People would spend hundreds of hours doing this. And so we get this sort of dystopian world where people are just grinding away at this stuff that no one even understands but them because they're trying to, because they think they're going to reach this recognition. Um, and I think this is uh, probably the biggest takeaway from this is that uh, grinding, grinding is to be avoided. So, uh, 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 Iron Lines was, uh, moving back to the community section, Iron Lines was the first act. We were Iron Lines was created, this is why I kind of have a picture of me creating Iron Lines. Um, uh, Iron Lines was back up and it was pretty quickly after that, sort of uh, abandoned by a tech dog who had okay, found other things to do in his life at this time. And so then the uh, there was this permanent move to where the lines. There were these other line guard sites um, kind of uh, competing um, with the red lines. Uh, we are lines end up outlasting them, and um, I, I'm, I'm biased, but my opinion as to why is because uh, there was a focus on line guard specifically as opposed to other communities that were sort of focused on local. We met the line guard. It wasn't a good model because it's still focused on the grind, but it did last a lot. We read the lines model that I was part of. So, community engagement. Um, there was a group called Line Rider Community Collaboration that started out as like what it sounds like it's a community of people collaborating. Um, later, it became a more elitist group because, because people wanted to be in the group, but they didn't want to participate. And the solution was to like make the group small. Um, but that also came with some share of problems. But um, we did uh, we did end up creating uh, evolution of line writer, which came out of this, which is one of the things in the gallery exhibition. Um, and there was a whole bunch of community steering projects that came out of this sort of um, this uh, this sort of same idea of community collaborations. Um, there was people that formed these groups called clans, 
they would work on projects together and release them. Um, and then sometimes when these things like battles, people would literally just say, I challenge you to move out. And then they would both make a track, and then people would vote on which one was better. <laughs> and that, that, that would be like a, like a validation thing. Um, this is, it was this really weird thing where people were more focused on the validation and approval of each other than they were on having fun and making all this stuff. Um, to the point where like, we would have contests and they wouldn't enter unless they thought they would win. <laughs> um, anyway. Um, one of the more interesting things during this time period was uh, uh, several people, but mostly this guy moved by Giorgio J.C. and um, I mispronounced it because I'm Danish, but uh, we had this interesting stuff where um, there were these expectations set up at this point with, oh, this looks like a manual, this looks like a flame box, we're going to do this, and then it would get flipped around so that like wash would like go on the outside of the curves that you would be expecting it, or there would be like these green lines added that look like a manual, but then like Bosch just uh, interacts with them in a totally different way. Um, people would hide, people would draw a green line that looks like a manual and hide uh, like a chain inside it, and then Bosch would interact with the way that you would expect um, this kind of thing. So, this doesn't ring to most people, but it was really interesting and entertaining for people that like were expecting these things and had watched lots of things like things. <clears throat> so um, uh, around this time is when people first started getting into music singing. Um, there was a few problems with this, however, um, which would later be solved. But right now, um, when when line writer lags, it just slows down. And so the more lines you draw, it, it, your track desyncs from the music. So the timer that was added in 6.7 actually really helps with this because then you can you can say, well, at 27 seconds the music changes, and so I'm going to change the track. To it. But you don't get to see what it looks like until you actually get the recording and then go and watch it with the music. And that was really time to be tedious to like make recording and you would see what it looked like. Um, people did this, um, most notably Blue Champion by GTP and Jam by Raphael, but they were like, um, Blue Champion was unfinished because it just took too long, it was too difficult to make, and Jam did get finished, but it was like, Raphael was totally burned out by the time he finished it. And, um, and at this point, it wasn't even really visualizing music, it was just lining tricks up so that tricks happened at the same time as music would happen. So, like, there would be a hit in the music, and that would correspond with like a flame or a stat. Um, and here we get to, <laughs> didn't think we were going to get here, did you? <laughs> this, 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 uh, this is, uh, yep. <laughs> so the community is shrinking, and people are sort of obsessed with competition and recognition. It's not really a clear objective of what's going on. Um, and it, it just creates this really toxic atmosphere where people are like, there are some people, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna be sensitive, but there, there are people that were um, actually calling themselves like, I'm the best at this, or I am, I am a living legend, or, or things, things like this. Like people just really thinking that they're the greatest because they ground, they've been at the grind more than other people. Um, uh, some people would get really mad when people wouldn't give them recognition, some people would uh, uh, some people would attack other people because they felt that they didn't understand how much work they put in or the skill that they put into it. Um, some people would like actually quit because they would post a track and some people would be like, I don't really like it, and they'd be like, I quit because I'm so mad. Um, this was wild and not good. <laughs> and so the community sort of uh, died. Faded, like, it's like it's really scary because no one wants to join a community that's like this. Um, and uh, the the thing, like the, there was a there was a sort of major turning point, which was this uh, this 
marathon community, or marathon commentary live stream, um, where I and some other people just watch my videos and commented on them. The live stream, and people, like, it word kind of spread because people sort of tuned in and would be like, oh, I'm going to go tell this person that they're watching the track and commenting on it, and this sort of snowballed into people like, uh, like a lot of people watching at once, and it uh, sort of like gave the community like a little bit of revitalization. And the only main difference at this point is that most people in the community were older, and so some some people were more mature, and some people had some new ideas about art and other things. And that is maybe the reason that it didn't go the same way as it had in the past. So one of those things was animation. Um, I'm going to see if this actually works. Oh yeah, here we go. So, if, if you go to high speed um, in LineWire, you can create a lot of distance between frames, and then you, then you can actually draw animations out one, one frame at a time. And so, you just get a little, you get a little, you get a little, this was a proof of concept made by somebody who was like, look, you can animate in LineWire. Um, oh, over here you can see that this is one frame of someone who took like a uh, like sort of special effects video on YouTube and traced in the frames into my very creative animation. Um, and then there was somebody who uh, realized that you could use the new pause and frame step forward feature to draw lines that move across the screen. And this was ideas of animation. Um, there's all there's not really any tools to do this well yet, but that's why I've been experimenting and stuff. Then a major game changer is when LineWriter Advanced was released. This was in early 2015. Um, it was a standalone program built entirely from scratch. So there was a way that's that um, there was a file manager built in, so you did not have to go hunting for your SRL files anymore in the obscure folder that Flash Player supported. Um, you didn't have, there's a, a timeline that you could scrub on, you could fast forward if you find. Um, so you didn't have to worry about the flag tool, you didn't have to worry about accidentally unmarking the flag and having to launch the track at the beginning. At, like, asking because of the flag. Um, while, uh, while you were paused, you could actually, um, you could adjust lines and you could draw new lines and launch this position and actually update in real time so you could work in a specific frame to do anything you wanted in that frame. And that basically just immensely set up the workflow where it, it just it got rid of a lot of your product, which made a huge difference. Um, but people found ways to reinvent the grind. <laughs> even, even after this, because the grind was the grind was the grind was life, right? So uh, anyway. Uh, oh, and then another thing, um, music syncing is built in. You can just select a song or a MP3 file of any kind and play the track and it'll work and then you can pause and then play from the or pause it and start with that point. So you can listen to just a specific section of the song and track at once. Another huge speeding up of workflow where you have to do this long process just to see what it looks like. So, <clears throat> my writer JavaScript had been work, had, was being worked on before my writer advance was sort of surprise released. Um, and shortly after my writer advance was, was released, my writer JavaScript was also released. And they sort of unintentionally became competitors. Um, Neither of them really knew that each other was working on a bill at the same time, um, and they didn't really like having it like be like, well, like, what do we do now when we both have separate bills? But neither of them wanted to go work on it, so this sort of became this weird thing. Um, but to oversimplify, why better events uh, focus on these sort of tools for people who have been making course stuff. So there's this thing called LifeLock that uh, helped you make something as strong as possible. Um, there are these indicators of like this is exactly why Bosch fell off sled at this particular point because like this line of effect at this point in a certain way. Um, so there was you 
could actually step through like not only the frames, but there was uh, I think it was six um, like subframes where there's six times the uh, six times the engine calculates the physics and you can see those all individually. So these are all like really really intense tools for people who really want to manipulate the movement of Bosch in high precise ways that they put into the gravity and stuff. Um, Lambda JavaScript focused on sort of more uh, more art features, more broad appeal features, such as there's onion skin, which is a classic animation tool uh, feature. There's uh, line selection, where you can, you can just select a line and then move it and then uh, you can select a line and you can decide if you want to change the line or move it around instead of adjusting it. Um, and then there's uh, track sharing, uh, which was a, something that I was focusing on. So, not to oversimplify, but to oversimplify, Lightroom Advanced felt more like a game, Lightroom JavaScript felt more like an animation. So, <laughs> I'm going to try to very briefly explain what these weird things are. So, the, the names get really weird because they're named out what they were. <laughs> so the uh, Cranwell discovered the Cranwell, which was named the Cranwell when the Cranwell discovered. Um, basically, Bosch gets compressed into the line because all of the, uh, and then stays there because all of the points have the same, uh, all, all of the points are perfectly in a horizontal line, and this creates a, a block where the physics doesn't know doesn't know how to calculate Bosch's position, and so just Bosch takes some sort of squish position. Then you can get Bosch out of it into it. And while in this position, um, you can it's, I won't explain the detail of how you can launch Bosch at an extremely high speed instantaneously. Um, people figured this out uh, <laughs> and made these absolutely bizarre things. One of them is um, in the room over there. Uh, and uh, then this got taken extremely people figured out <clears throat> you can compress all of the contact points down into one point, and that one can be manipulated in any way you want. People would people would stack like hundreds or thousands of acceleration lines at, on top of each other and then push all of the contact points that were squished into the singularity. And you can accelerate Bosch like infinitely, basically. Um, <laughs> and then 10 point cans were, if you didn't like those limitations, why don't, just, why don't just affect every individual contact point on its own with a, like, you know, a thousand accelerations each? So you just basically teleport Bosch from here to here uh, <laughs> from any point. Um, so at this point, we basically hit the ceiling, right? There's not much, there's not much here you can go if you're trying to do extreme dramatic movement other than you can literally tell for Bosch anytime, anywhere, instantly. Um, so at this point, we were like, where do we go? Well, there's a, there's a surge in experimentation because there are these new versions and people are like, well, what rules should still apply? What can we still create? What should we still create? And so people start doing these really kind of off the wall experimentation. And people are like, what if we use LineWire to do like a space opera score with lots of edits and cuts? What if we what if we put like overlay a bunch of like a bunch of a bunch of uh, a bunch of tracks and like uh, tint them different colors and then have them sing to different instruments? Um, this is all very interesting. Um, there is also a lot of uh, uh, like meta tracks and subversive tracks, tracks about tracks, tracks about the community. Um, in 2013, this would be take the form of like reference to those tracks and maybe some like satire. Um, in 2016, it became pretty blunt. Um, people making like things that were like uh, very like uh, very anti or very pro certain uh, perspectives. Um, I'm, I'm just speeding up because I realize that I'm like, oh, this is uh, going on and on. Uh, so, 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 some of these tracks are going viral, and uh, 
So, so yeah, so uh, during this period of experimentation, there were a few tracks that were hits outside of the community. Um, and that was uh, so three of them, three of the, the three big ones were Ragdoll by Gun Drummer, which was this um, Bosch goes offside immediately, and then this minute where it's dance to the music. And this really caught on. Um, another one is this was written by me, um, and this was 51 minutes without any manuals or graphics at all. Um, and it's 51, it's, I only made it 50 minutes because it didn't have any intense tricks. Um, and then Mountain King by Joe Chaos, where he saw this whole story and made Mountain King without knowing anything about the work or manuals or any of these bizarre techniques, and it became the most viral writer track ever. <laughs> and he wasn't even aware, he was barely even aware there was a community at this point. Um, and so this is this is sort of a way of a call for a lot of people, even myself. Um, so so here, here we have um, this is a contentious and debated topic, and so I am oversimplifying. I also call very strong on one side. Um, but um, to do my best to summarize this, we have um, we have uh, artists and gamers. Um, gamers don't like the label gamers, but I don't know what labels to use. Um, so uh, the artists sort of focus on accessibility and critical artistic lens from like how do we make this entertaining? Um, and most of the viral tracks come from this little lot. And the gamers sort of are trying to focus on these new techniques and uh, exploiting glitches and pushing the limits of like what can, what is possible to do. Um, and most of the primary community falls in this game. So you have this, and, and this is where I made, this is the topic that I made, the gamification of, of art medium video as it um, So uh, it's hard to do a retrospective on things that are super recent, so I'll just go through them. <laughs> uh, Lenderd.com uh, relaunched um, after the style abandonment um, with a uh, reformed Lenderd JavaScript. Um, we had the lines that has slowly been uh, abandoned, and a subreddit and Discord server have taken over the community. Uh, most of the community has sort of moved over to the Discord server at this point. Um, the, there's a new minor.com build that has a bunch of new tools, um, some of which are in videos in the other room. Um, and minor events is also adding some of those tools as well. Um, Washington finally has the rights again, and we're here in this gallery, and I don't know where we're going here. But I want to end on some exciting note to say that there are, to go back to the, those original dabbles in the animation, because of these new tools, there are a lot of really exciting things happening. So um, then this upper left, um, Bosch appears to ride his rocket ship through these stars. Or Moving past, and this was made possible by the copy paste feature and sort of a, a, like an unseen feature where you can see the frames uh, overlap. Um, on the upper right here, um, this is uh, lines that are slowly changing in angle, and they're, uh, it creates this cool web curve thing that animates that Bosch goes through. Um, in the lower left here, this is a hand with a pencil that's animating. Uh, that's, it, 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 if you copy paste feature, you can just copy and paste the whole hand. And so the hand appears to be drawing a track that Bosch rides on because Bosch is going fast enough that he can do the animation. Um, and then in the bottom right here, um, we have these uh, tessellated shapes that were actually coded directly into Line Rider um, to create this sort of cool pulsing. Uh, pulsing background that appears to be animated. So these are all some very exciting things that are happening um, that uh, everyone in the community can get behind. So in conclusion, it's, it, it's, again, it's been a hard to draw conclusion because I'm so close to all of this, and um, it's hard for me to know what's important and what's not, and what's interesting and what's not. But, uh, Basically, I, I feel like the
there's been a lot of focus on narrow bounds for what makes uh, something that people make, and you know, something that someone makes in Latin America good, and that uh, different people want to use Latin America in different ways, and all of those ways should be supported. Um, the only way that is definitely bad is the grind. The only way that is definitely bad is when people um, consider spending lots of hours doing very tedious and repetitive tasks to be a measure of value. <laughs> Um, everything, every other way that people can imagine using my writer is something that um, should be supported. And I don't know the best ways to do that, uh, but that's that's what I think should be our goal moving forward. Um, and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave with this question for everyone using my writer, interested in my writer, or inspired by my writer, which is. What do we want to create? I think that's, that's where we're at.
So you should see it. <laughs> so have you tried the VR version? VR right now. Oh, we are mine right now. Uh, yes, I have. Um, it's very cool. It's very, it's very much uh, in the same spirit of the original Beta 1, um, but it's 3D and it's virtual reality. It's, it's, really, it's really fun. It was really fun. I, had, I played around with it maybe about half an hour. So what I thought of when I was doing it this afternoon, and I was stunned, was how do you make that holographic? So you could have in this space something that a group could see you create. How do I make the best of this moment? 
And that's a life lesson. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in some ways, I think this is like the most dramatic example of anything I've ever seen of taking something that was a mistake and using it so much and so many people getting so excited over it that it it's it almost ceases to become a, it ceases to be a glitch. Well, it well, ceases to be a well, 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 mistake. Yeah. That's another. That's another. That's a, that's a good point. Yeah. So so you know, and it, it does. There is obviously the question of like, uh, for I'm thinking about Bastian coming back to life right now. It's like, what what do you what do you do? Do you like like if it's not part of the original intention? How do you go about? Yes. Yeah. 
students. Um, and I don't really have a solution. I mean, I don't think it's good. <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of, uh, it's kind of shameful, honestly. But how do you, how do you attack a problem that is that old and that deep? So. Any other questions? Thank you very much. So we have another lecture on Saturday. Also, other line writer fans are coming. So hopefully, also. I feel like this one better because I did this one. Yeah. <laughs> I have one, con one comment. If you could illustrate, just with very brief clips in video, some of the some of the things that you're talking about. Yeah. That's for probably for us. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably a good idea. Have you been in selection in place also? Uh, no. What was the question? This is the first time you did it. This is the first time I've done it, and I, I put it together in two weeks while also working my day job and planning this trip. Did you do this in the US? Would you do this in the US? I mean, yes. I, 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 I will I will give this talk anywhere in the world. <laughs>